Hey everyone, welcome to our species spotlight on the guppy, Pocilia recticulata. Uh, like our other species spotlights, we're going to start with the origins of the fish, uh, a little bit about its wild habitat and its state on the, uh, on the, in the globe, where it's distributed and so forth. Then we're going to go into behavior, color, size, uh, you know, compatibility and so forth, get into the water chemistry, a little bit about feeding, and then we're going to sign off with a quick summary on our likes and dislikes of the fish and how great we think it is. Um, so let's get right into it. The, uh, the guppy uh, is currently, or its native uh, distribution is uh, northeastern South, uh, South America to the southern Caribbean. Uh, currently, it's widespread uh, throughout the world. In fact, over 50 different countries have feral wild populations of guppies. And uh, the biggest reason for that is the fact that they were introduced by uh, governments in ditches and swamps where uh, malaria issues arise with, uh, with mosquitoes. And the guppies are very adept at, uh, at eating uh, newly hatched uh, mosquito larvae. So they control that very, very well and have been a natural uh, way of controlling the spread of that disease. Um, typically, uh, they will do best uh, in, uh, in a habitat where there's a lot of emergent plants around the shores, uh, where there's some submerged uh, aquatic uh, you know, vegetation growing, plants and so forth, obviously uh, keeps them safe from predators. The wild guppy, in fact, is, uh, is really a very hardy fish. It adapts well to you know, mountain streams all the way down to swamps and lowland uh, areas as well. So it's very hardy small fish, live bearing fish that uh, is quite adaptable to a number of different conditions. Uh, unfortunately, these days, or both unfortunate and fortunate these days, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, domestic strains, uh, really inbred strains, as beautiful as they may be, a lot of these very fancy varieties have become somewhat neat, weaker in nature and uh, are more prone to various diseases and so forth. They're less uh, less adaptable to conditions. So bear that in mind. The guppy that you're probably going to be buying, it's not going to be a wild guppy. It's going to be one that's been raised in commercial conditions. And the fancier they are and the more inbred they are, the more prone they are to, to problems. So something to bear in mind. Okay, so let's get into the behavior compatibility, tank size, differences between male and female in the guppy and so forth. Now, the guppy is a very peaceful fish. It's a small, uh, small fish. Females get up to maybe 2.5 inches or about six centimeters in length. Males uh, about half of that usually. Uh, it's very peaceful, as I said, in nature. It's a live bearing fish. Females will exhibit a gravid spot. You know, as they come due closer to term, you'll see the gravid spot becomes darker, which is the actually the uh, eggs of the, uh, uh, sorry, eggs, the, uh, the eyes of the fry that you're seeing in the embryo. So gives you a little bit of insight into how close to term they are. The typical uh, gestation period for a female guppy is about 30 days when it's kept between the temperatures of about 76, 77 Fahrenheit to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. In that range, you can expect a, a term of about, a gestation period of about 30 days. Now, when it comes to mixing uh, guppies in a community setup, you wanna make sure that you, you keep them with other slower moving, calm, really peaceful fish, nothing that fin nips, uh, you know, uh, corridors catfish, um, uh, very gentle, small rasboras, for example, are typically okay. Some of the micro tetras, the very small tetras, typically are okay. But there are some fin nipping species, uh, so you got to keep an eye on that. Especially if you have guppies that have long, fancy tails, delta tails, and so forth, they're very prone to being fin nipped. So, with those fish, typically better to keep them alone with maybe some scavengers. But um, things like lower sword, upper sword, double swords common guppies and so forth. They mix well with a variety of different smaller tetras, small anabantids, rasboras, and as I said, peaceful bottom dwellers are not a problem with those fish. Um, now, when it comes to the type of setup you want to maintain with a guppy, planted is definitely a great way to go. You want them in a planted tank that not only do they look good, but it provides them with a natural uh, backdrop, they feel very comfortable, and uh, obviously if your goal is to save some of the fry, the babies, you can easily do that. They normally are very adept at hiding the plant leaves, especially at the surface. So you will will have an increase in growth, uh, growth in population with them for sure. So you make sure that you're able to handle it, obviously, you'll need another tank. A pair of guppies, you can easily keep them alone in something from three to five gallons, but bear in mind, you will be needing to take the fry out as uh, as they occur. 
because uh, you, there's just going to be too many fish. I mean, a female guppy can, uh, you know, typical brood size is anywhere from maybe five to 30 to 40 babies would be very typical. Uh, drops of maybe 50, 60 fry do happen. And there are reports of, uh, of batches of babies up to 100, although, uh, you know, that's that's usually pretty rare. Average is somewhere between about 45 to 45 to 50, somewhere in there. Okay, so now let's get into a little bit about water conditions. Uh, guppies prefer temperatures really about 77 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere between 25 and 27 degrees Celsius. Uh, pH range should be a little bit on the alkaline side, seven neutral to about eight. That's a typical preferred range for them. Just about any guppy will do well in that range. If it's slightly acidic water, it's, it's usually fine, but definitely try to keep them between neutral and eight, somewhere in there. Water hardness, moderately hard, about eight to 12, or sorry, five to 12 uh, degrees hardness is, is fine for, uh, for guppies. In terms of filtration, um, you know, you want to make sure that it's, you don't need strong uh, water movement. In fact, an air-driven sponge filter in a five-gallon tank for a pair is, is more than adequate. Don't need a lot of water movement, uh, but water quality is very important. So good regular water changes will really help their growth rate and condition. If you feed them a good varied diet and do that, it's pretty much all you have to do to take keep guppies in really good condition. Now, as far as feeding the uh, guppy is concerned, uh, it's not a fussy feeding. It is an upturned mouth like uh, most live bearers do. Um, you know, it'll accept anything from small baby brine shrimp to chopped up adult shrimp, uh, glass worms, blood worms, mosquito larvae, all these things in frozen format, for example, uh, are, that are available. You can, you can definitely feed guppies. Uh, good quality, high protein, finer, smaller flake foods are, are typical fare for them. But you, you know, make sure you're buying a quality food with a variety of ingredients. Again, uh, Fluval Bug Bites, always a great selection, especially since uh, uh, there is insect protein as a number one protein source in some of the formulations. Highly recommended for them. Uh, should you feed uh, foods with the vegetable matter? Absolutely. Some vegetable flakes are a great idea for guppies. Do that on a pretty regular base because, basis because they will consume some algae as well. Being a typical live bear, they like to pick on plant leaves and so forth. They have a need for plant matter. So getting, giving them some regular feedings with a vegetable flake is highly, uh, highly recommended. So. Yeah, good regular small feedings are the way to go with guppies. I would feed them a couple of times a day, two to three times a day, but small amounts. Uh, they are a fish with a fairly high uh, metabolic rate and a fairly short lifespan, you know, two to three years. We've got to mention that before. Uh, but uh, smaller, more frequent feedings are really better uh, for fish that uh, to tend to have that, that metabolic rate uh, as guppies do. So in summary, uh, the guppy is a great hardy fish for you know all beginners to uh, to start with tropical fish. Definitely has a foundation in the hobby as being that kind of fish. Given the wide conditions, it does well. Just pay attention to the fact that if you're going for really fancy varieties, then you got to pay attention to water temperature and really regular water changes being an important factor. Uh, common guppies are some of the hardier forms of swords and so forth. They tend to be a little bit hardier and a little bit more adaptable to uh, community fish with the peaceful species we mentioned before. Um, you know, keep them in a planted tank. They're, they're fantastic to see in a planted aquarium. In fact, that's really the only fish you, you need in a planted tank and some types of setups. I think they look marvelous and that type of setup brings out all their stunning colors really beautifully and the variety of colors available are just it's breathtaking. You can get them in, in just about any kind of color and such a multitude of fin shapes. The choice and variety makes it definitely one of our favorite fish for sure. Um, and then it's, it's great for the more advanced hobbyists too that really wants to experiment with strengthening strains of guppies or creating new strains. It's, it, it brings in an infinite new level of possibility for somebody getting into breeding and understanding uh, genetics and how that plays a part in in, in developing a strain of guppy. And of course, one that uh, would result in a stronger strain that's more resistant. 
is always a very noble objective. So uh, we would encourage anybody doing that. So there you have it. Uh, the guppy, lots to choose from, great fish, fabulous for, for uh, the right type of aquarium and great for all levels of hobbyists. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe below. Be back at you next month. Take care. Thank you.